Hi, my name is Monica Torres. I'm a mortician and this is how I work it. I'm gonna take you through 24 hours of my beauty and wellness routine. I've been a mortician for over 13 years and cared for thousands of loved ones. I take bodies that are unviewable and work my dark art into a viewable option for families to have at a funeral. It's my goal to combine science and beauty to create a positive last memory for that family. It's about 6.30 in the morning here and um, just getting my day going. I spend each morning like this and what can I say? I'm a dog lover. I'm not your average mortician. I'm also a licensed embalmer, cremationist, deserologist, and postmortem reconstructive specialist. Being an embalmer is definitely physically demanding. It's mentally demanding, it's emotionally demanding, but for sure, you gotta be in shape. So I stretch, I do yoga, you know, going over my positive affirmations. I make coffee every morning. I have my death wish coffee, which I absolutely love because it's super strong. I pre-plan all my meals and package all my meals, usually the day before or that morning, depending on what I'm gonna be doing. From there, head into the bathroom and start my daily routine. I use Retin-A or Trenitonin on my skin to make sure that I'm able to battle these, you know, maybe breakouts or whatnot. I love a Murad face wash and I will use that. It really gets in there on top of the Murad face wash. I will use a Dermalogica micro scrub and it really does seem to get in there and remove any of those oils. If I'm wearing makeup, I will bust open my makeup kit. I am a Mac girl, I'm a Mac pro. I was a makeup artist before I was a mortician. I like to take care of the outside too. And I feel like when I look good, I can present that to families and then they can feel confident that I'm gonna make their loved one look good. I love this Too Faced bronzer. And even though it is kind of thick, it smells really good, which I love. I'm in my 40s now, so that means that I do have to use hair color, and I absolutely love Redken hair color. I'd use a lot of emollients. I love Biolage, and I use that rehydrating mask. It's like a staple in my shower. I've had this haircut for a few years now, and living here in Arizona, it's been the best thing that I've ever done. It's so cool in the summer, and I love it because I can flip my hair over if I have to meet with a family, and make it look professional. Or if I'm going to a concert on Friday or Saturday night, I can flip it the other way and just look really rocking. <laughs> as far as self-care is concerned, it's really important to me that I go see my chiropractor at least twice a week, especially because I'm traveling so much. Try to do regular massages, heat therapy at home. I use a heating pad pretty regularly during the week. At least three or four times a week, I'll have a heating pad on my neck or my back. Going and t doing maintenance on my own Botox and um, you know my own liquid facelift and Juvederm and all that, that's really important to me. It also keeps me in tune with what is in on trend and in style within the beauty industry. And that way I can take that back to the funeral home and apply those same techniques to the deceased loved ones in my care. Since I do specialize in embalming, I'm in scrubs most of the time. I usually have a bun in my hair and I have my scrubs and that's what I'm rocking at work. I use a lab coat sometimes. If I'm working at home and on, I'm online and doing an online consulting or coaching call, then it's a little more relaxed. I'll typically wear my scrubs and I do all of my online coaching in my home office. Hello, welcome to my prep room. Through my coaching company, we offer opportunities. We have a scholarship for young women and transgender individuals. And we offer opportunities for females that are in the funeral industry, whether they're a manager, whether they're a student, it doesn't matter. As long as they have a focus on preparing the body for families, I offer them these opportunities for scholarships. There's always a stereotype that embalmers are not personable or that we don't like to have fun or hang out. We are ordinary people with extraordinary gifts. I like to call it a dark art. I'm a follower of other dark artists who um, may be creating art on canvas or sculptures and the only difference between them and I is that I do it on the human body. Mentally, this type of work is not for the weak. So I definitely try to play some relaxing music and listen to positive affirmations about life and living. I definitely deal with people that are distraught. They're 
grieving heavily, there's a lot of fear involved. And let's be honest, like death is scary. It's scary for all of us. And that's important to me to know how to, how to conquer fear, to have the tools I need to conquer those fears that I face every single day. My work schedule is really demanding. Funeral directors and embalmers, we're on call 365 days a year, much like doctors. I take call in the middle of the night regularly. My phone is never off. I do embalm on the graveyard shift quite a bit. I'm here at the funeral home because this is when I begin my day. Usually when everyone else is going home, I'm beginning my day. It's gonna be a long night. So I don't put a lot of makeup on. I dress for comfort. I have my compression socks on and I'm getting ready to get my embalming kit and get in the prep room to take care of these recently deceased loved ones. I might be embalming till two or three in the morning. Those nights can be pretty rough because you know I'm on the road driving from funeral home to funeral home to funeral home, but I don't know what it is. I like it. I like the serene, quietness of the prep room when it's just me and that person's loved one. It's about eight o'clock at night and I got a death call. And so I am headed out to go and bomb. I'm on my way to my next funeral home. It's 10.30 at night. Very difficult case, but I feel satisfied with the results. That type of schedule can become rigorous. As a specialist, I do travel a lot as well. I'm a public speaker and I travel all over the country and some parts of the world. I do host online events at least four or five times a month. So my schedule is pretty busy. Most of what I teach is technical based and it's art and science, but in reality, I teach women how to overcome fear. The types of services that I offer are highly innovative. They mirror plastic surgery, Botox injections, Juvederm injections, real rejuvenation. And this is something different that has never been done in my industry before. Doing makeup on the deceased is one of the most important aspects of my job as an embalmer. I use all kinds of mortuary cosmetics, MAC makeup. It's like stage makeup, so it's really suited for what we do. There is professional mortuary makeup like this one here that produces a non-thermogenic effect and it's non-thermogenic makeup. It comes in all different colors and varieties for every skin type out there. Mortuary makeup is non-thermogenic and regular makeup is thermogenic. So our bodies create heat and that's what you know chemists use to create the makeup. They understand that our bodies create heat and that's how they're formulating the makeup. As far as mortuary makeup is concerned, non-thermogenic makeup is the way that we formulate makeup. So that it's just completely different. For many, many years, and I'm talking like probably over 50 or 60 years, we had a very limited supply and options for makeup and they were designed by men and chemists and a lot of them smell like paint or like craft products. And I'm really happy to say that things are really changing. One of the products that I really like to use is a mortuary makeup product called Lola 7. And what I love about the makeup is that it works amazing on embalmed and unembalmed skin, but it also smells amazing. The woman who created this makeup is also a funeral director and an entrepreneur. And it's just, a, it's just proof that our industry is changing and women, all the women that are coming in our industry are helping to change that one step at a time. I will use any kind of coconut oil for hair. We use these really heavy massage creams to keep the face hydrated during the preservation process. And if you don't res remove that cream before you apply the makeup, it can look a little cakey. So I always completely facial, I do a full facial on each person before I even start to apply makeup. As far as trying to make that person look like themselves, I try to ask the family as many questions as I can and I have an intake sheet where I'm writing down all this information and I get really detailed to like what shape of nails did she wear. If it's a young woman who passes away, like I want to know exactly what brand of eyelashes she used. I want to know exactly what brand of eyeliner she used. I want to know everything about her skincare so that I can make her look like herself in death the way that she looked in life. As far as clothing is concerned, I always ask the family to bring in something that really represents that person's life. 
Like, what did they like? Did they like to wear pajamas every day? Bring in Jammer Jays. Were they comfortable in a suit? Then bring in a suit. One little trick that I do to make clothing look nice, tailored, and fitted on the deceased is I um, tailor them up the back so that they don't look bunched up on the front. And it's also easier to put the clothing on. When it comes to acne on deceased bodies, I typically will not really go after the acne like I would maybe if it was like a living person because a lot of times you can create a defect on the skin if you're aggressive with the skin. If a person has blackheads, however, I'm getting that done. I will definitely give them a facial and I will definitely get in there and put a little pressure and remove those blackheads. Um, absolutely. I feel like it is that person's last big day and they gotta be looking their best. As far as teeth are concerned, as long as the mouth is disinfected, that's what I'm looking for. Flossing, I won't floss teeth, but I'm definitely in there with the toothbrush and um, hose and water. A lot of times I will, you know, hose and water that area out. A lot of that will come up after death. So absolutely I'm going in there with the toothbrush and um, typically Listerine, sometimes even soap. Eyebrows are so important. They're such a huge thing right now. Some of people are wearing the bushy eyebrows and you gotta put the soap and make the eyebrows, you know, stand out. So, so important. I would say eyelashes and eyebrows right now, we can't mess that up. As a mortician, I have to get that right every single time. Another thing too is that I don't put the eyelashes on top of the eyes because we're not used to seeing a person with their eyes closed. I'll actually insert the eyelashes just underneath and glue those eyelashes just underneath the eyes and it looks absolutely way more natural. That's one of my embalming tips. Typically by the time I get home, I am exhausted and in it really, really needing a glass of wine. <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed and sleep for a few hours and I'll get up and start bookkeeping. So, done with all the embalmings for tonight. I'm gonna get some much needed rest. I have a boyfriend now, but it's definitely been a challenge. Dating is always uncomfortable, I guess. Like when I first meet someone and I tell them what I do, I get two reactions. I either get completely overwhelmed with questions or I get this look. <laughs> A lot of times people get freaked out. They're afraid. They think that death is contagious. <laughs> so they think that like somehow by dating me, it's gonna like rub off on them. I don't know. It was, it's, it's been a challenge for sure. I wanna encourage any woman who wants to get into this field, do it. If you've always had a dream to be a mortician, if you have a curiosity about science and art and how we use those two fields to create this beautiful dark art for families and help families, now is the time.